J-Mac and Wenger, may I suggest that you go on mute unless you are speaking? Um, same with anybody else that actually can infiltrate our webinar. Um, so welcome everybody. Um, this is our inaugural webinar um, and today uh, J-Mac and Winger are going to be taking you through a couple of slides that basically gives you key information that you will need to know about opening your gaming center. Um, we will be having a, a, an FAQ or a q and I should say, at the end of the presentation. So feel free to type your questions in chat at any time, and I will uh, make sure that your question is brought up at the end of the session. Um, with that, I'm going to hang it, hand it over to uh, the boys to take you through everything you need to know about opening your gaming center. Thanks for the intro, Georgina. Uh, again, I'm, I'm Jason McIntosh uh, within GG Circuit, known as JMac, and uh, that's just my nickname and my gamer tag, I guess. Um, with me is Michael Winger. He is the head of our services division at GG Circuit. So um, just a quick background about what we're trying to do here. This really isn't about selling you on anything. Uh, we are, are obviously going to promote our software GG Leap, and we're going to talk about our services division a little bit. But the main point of this is just to get have an easy way for people to get to us and ask questions. Uh, we get a lot of questions from time to time that says, "Hey, I want to open a land center, but I have no idea how to get started." And that this kind of starts the dance of like emailing back and forth and getting somebody set up to um, call you back and get a no obligation call going. And then so we just wanted a way for people to come to us all at once, go through a little bit of information so that you become more informed about everything that we a provide or b that you need to know about creating a game center. So, um, Michael, I'll let you uh, start off with uh, some of your slides, and we'll just kind of go back and forth, and we'll answer questions as needed. Thanks, Jim Mac. Uh, as I already been mentioned, I'm Michael Winger. Uh, because there's about 10 billion uh, Michaels in this uh, planet, everybody just calls me Winger. Um, but it's a pleasure to meet you all digitally. Uh, but let's just uh, jump right into it. Um, here at GG Circuit, uh, I run our services division. So I guess my official title would be uh, Professional Service Director. And this is actually what I do on a daily basis. Uh, I've been doing esports, um, especially esports centers, land centers, esports arenas, whatever you want to call them these days, uh, since about the mid 2000s. So this is this is what I do. I help clients all across the globe get up and open. And uh, we just wanted to take some time today to really show you know, kind of some basics uh, of, of what it takes to get up and open and kind of just go through a couple bullet points and uh, just kind of help people out. So uh, as you can see here, this is your business plan. So let's talk about, you know, if you're going to open up a center, you've probably never done it before. Um, you got to start somewhere and the business plan is exactly where you want to start. Um, this is pretty much your roadmap of everything that you're going to do for the next uh, three months, six months, uh, 12 months. And, you know, if you're really good, you're taking them out to about five years. Uh, expansion plans, opening up multiple locations, um, growing the first location to a bigger size. So this is really where all the magic starts. And the key point of the business plan and most of the inquiries that we get for our customers when they want to open is financial data. Um, and the reason is, is because that's what investors want to see. Um, even if you're self-funding or if you're going to go to a family member or a bank or wherever you're going to go, um, you have to have financial data and it's just not available. Uh, if you wanted to go open up a McDonald's or a Subway or a Jimmy John's, um, you know, those are franchise models. You pay these franchise fees. In some cases, uh, they're very affordable and others, um, they're very, very expensive, but they're a tried and true business and the financial data is there and the company provides you with that financial data. Uh, and because of the trust that the investment market that people have in that company, uh, it's really easy to get loans and to get money for that. Uh, unfortunately, in the esports world, we're kind of the wild, wild west still is what I say. And so getting access to that financial data is super, super, super difficult. Um, so what we do here in this part of the um, business plan is we try to help you um, 
understand what those financial information looks like. We pull off of uh, our land centers that we've owned in the past. Uh, I used to own a company called the Gamers Funk in Utah. Um, I most commonly refer to that as TGF for short. Uh, our CEO and founder of GG Circuit is Zach Johnson. He still currently owns eBash in Terre Haute, Indiana. Um, we use those plus our software GG Leap to build a financial plan for your company, for your business model. Your business model is going to be different than the models that we run. It's going to be different than the guy down the street, but there are a lot of things that do translate over um, as far as patterns, utilization, um, general costs, that sort of thing. And so we help you fill that, fill that information in so that you can make an educated decision on whether uh, this business is right for you. Um, just some key points um, on these bullet points here. CapEx, that's capital expenditures for those of you who don't know. Um, so this is money that uh, you're going to spend to actually build out your store, things that you're going to buy. Um, other things that we go through in the business plan that we help you with is uh, the size of your business, what actually you're going to do, what actually you're going to accomplish, um, the different things you're going to purchase. Um, that you might not understand, you know, gaming centers and sports arenas, it's not just about playing video games. There's a lot of things that go into that uh, so that you can be um, financially successful because no one wants to invest in a company that's not. Um, and then the other part of the business plan, there's a lot of fluff and stuff, as I like to say. Um, it's really not as important as the financial data, uh, but people who maybe don't understand the business in the industry, um, you know, they want to have a better a better grasp of what's going on. And so that's great stuff to put in there uh, to help those people understand that. Funding, um, this is a hot topic. I get a lot of questions about this. This is something that obviously GG Circuit does not fund land centers uh, or esports centers. Um, and we don't currently have any relationships with any investors or banks. Um, the key point here is that, again, as we mentioned in your in your business plan, still new. You know, if you wanted to open up a hamburger joint, you could go to any bank or an SBA office and they'd ask which one you wanted to open up. They'd ask you for some money. They'd fund the rest and you'd be off and going. Um, but unfortunately, um, this is new. And so, you know, with the high risk involved, uh, you know, it's a lot more difficult to, to get funding. Um, so I wanted to talk real briefly about how our customers actually get funded. You know, we start, we see about 30 companies start up a month using our software. You know, globally, there's probably more than that. Um, but, uh, you know, the first and foremost, uh, the most popular option is just cash. People just self-fund. You have cash. Um, so wherever you got it from, you have it. Uh, and obviously, uh, you want to spend it on your business, and that's what you can end up doing. Um, another popular option that I see people do um, under the self-funding is uh, HELOCs. That's a home equity line of credit. Um, they'll take the equity they have in their house or some other property, and they'll use that to fund or start up their business. Um, something else uh, that's quite common, angel investors. Um, this could be someone close to you in your circle of influence. This could be a grandma. This could be um, a parent. It could be a brother, sister, You know, someone on your social media pages. Um, or it could just be someone else that has money and is interested in uh, uh, investing in esports. Um, so that, that does happen. We see that quite a bit as well. Um, something that's less common, but uh, I've seen about four times this year in startups here in the United States especially, um, 401k rollovers. Uh, specifically, there's a lot of programs. Um, ROBS, which is a rollover business startup plan. Um, there's a couple other options that are very similar to that. Obviously, if you want more information on this, uh, you're going to want to talk to you know some financial advisors and um, professionals in that part of the industry, but that's a, a pretty common option, especially if you've been working a long time and have a nice little nest egg um, saved up, you can use that nest egg to invest in yourself. Location, location. So this is probably after your business plan. This is, you know, when you're starting to get up, you need to figure out where you're going to implement your business plan. It. This is going to be one of the most important decisions that you make. Um, there's a lot of key determining factors that determine where you want to open up. You know, obviously your business model is going to be different than the next guys. You might be large, you might be small, um, you might be targeting a different demographic. Um, so if you're targeting, you know, 14 year olds and moms for birthday parties, or if you're targeting college kids um, or just adults for a bar. Uh, so depending on what you want to accomplish, that's going to depend on where you want to open. And there's a lot of key factors that go into that. Um, one helpful hit tip here. Uh, you do need to make sure you check with your local government entities. Um, we've seen quite a few businesses 
purchase locations or even sign lease agreements and then after they get up and going a couple months later um, they have to close down because they're in violation of whatever a rule might be. Just for an example, uh, there was a gentleman in Salt Lake City a couple years ago who opened up and after he was operating it turned out that his place wasn't allowed to be open past 10 p.m. at night. Well, that's a problem, especially on the weekends when you want to operate till 2, 3, 4, 5 in the morning. Um, and it's just because of the area and the way it was zoned. So he ended up having to move and it was a really costly um, move for him because he had already invested in a build out and into the space that he was at. So. Um, those are just some different things that you want to uh, pay attention to. But in our GG Circuit Professional Services Package, we talk about what makes a great location, how much you should be spending, uh, what's too little, what's too much, different things that will go into pretty much perfecting the location and getting uh, you the easiest access to your customers. Management software. This is... You want me to take this one real quick? Yeah, yeah. I think this is going to be J-Mac. This is his Yeah, so... Um... You know, much like Winger, we have been running eBash in Indiana for uh, many years. 2004, I believe, is when we started. And so, uh, you know, we ran a competitor software for a long time. And around, I want to say 2012, 2013 is when we began the uh, journey, let's say, of, of building our own management software. So, when, when people get into the land center business and maybe they're technically savvy, maybe they aren't, um, you know, there's a few competitors out there of management software and some people don't even know that, that there is software that exists that can help you run a land center. So we have built GG Leap. Uh, you know, in 2012, we started building just a competition feature and we realized that uh, we needed to build our own management software to do the things that our competitors could not. Um, so we began down that road, and it was a very much a grassroots movement because we we knew a lot of land center owners, and we said, "Hey, try out our software, see if you like it better than the competitor." And it just kind of continued rolling um, to today. Uh, our software is a, a cloud-based PC client and web administrator, and we have about. A little over 650 locations around the world right now that utilize our software. So it's just one giant network of all these locations that um, you know we can track that are using our software, can send out events, and we try to do our best to provide player incentives to get people back into your location. Uh, back in the day, it was just good enough to have an internet connection and PCs, and now. Um, you need a lot more. You need events, you need entertainment, you need prize redemption, you need reasons why players want to come back and either compete or just play a lot and earn a free Coke at the end of the day. Um, we have done our best to create a software that is uh, positive for business owners versus just technically savvy owners. And it's really a, an easy thing. You install our client, you log into the client, and it connects to the cloud server automatically. Um, there's obviously some settings and stuff that you have to set up and games that you have to enable. But I really feel like at a maximum, it would take someone that's non-technical about a full week to get set up with GG Leap. Somebody that is technical, it may take a half an hour to an hour um, to get at least the GG Leap installed and connected. Um, it is very simple. The other thing that we take a lot of pride in is our support. So directly within the web administrator, we have direct chat with someone live 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, like I said, we do not only hourly rewards for players, but we also do automatic stat tracking for specific supported games. Um, and so players earn coins from both of those areas, and they can use those coins for prize redemption both locally and globally with a global prize vault. Um, so that's just an introduction to our software. Uh, we, right now we have a 30-day trial, um, and you can utilize our support and try out our software for a, a good period of time. So whether you're ready to open up in two days or a month, you have time to try out the software, ask questions, and find out anything you need to know. Um, so again, you know, from our, our architecture, 
ggleap is cloud-based so right smack dab in the middle is the the gg circuit and ggleap servers um, we have servers all over the world so there really isn't an issue for uh, foreign countries to get a good connection to our servers um, you can install the client on all your PCs on the gaming PC side as you see on the left hand so, and it just directly connects to the server so that everything gets up and running uh, our software is Windows shell based which means it it bypasses Windows but at any time you can admin mode those PCs if you need to do anything on Windows like game installs etc um, and th the cool thing about our web administrator is that you can use, you can access it anywhere. It can be on a PC, it can be on a tablet, it can be on mobile. And so that helps your, uh, you as a business owner and your center employees to have flexibility. Uh, and when they're either introing a customer into your store or somebody's at home that is the only one that can fix something, they can access it from home. Uh, here's a quick uh, view of our PC client. Um, all your enabled games show up right in the middle. All of your customers' player stats show up on the left-hand side, so that's going to show how many coins they've earned, how many they've spent, how many they have left to redeem. Uh, we have a ranking system based on their coins earned, so it's going to show globally what their rank is, what their rank is regionally, uh, and, and or like uh, you know continents or locally in your store what their um, rank is, as well as to show your statistical history of what you've done over time at your location. Um, on the, Actually, go back for just a second. On the right-hand side of the, um, of the user interface, you have the ability to customize, add your own banners. You have games and apps categories, as well as a shop category. The shop category is really important because it allows you, your players to pay for time or products directly at their seat. So if they pay for a time product, it gets automatically added to their account without them having to get up, without them having to interact with an employee. If they order products, your employees will be notified so that you can deliver those items to um, players at their seat if, if applicable. Um, and you can you know customize it yourself. You can add in your own branding logo. You can add in your own colors. And um, if you need something above that, we even do custom user interfaces for clients. So this is just you know a, a view of our web client. Um, this is the graphical view, so you can see a map of where all your PCs and consoles are, and you can take um, action on those PCs, log people in. Um, I'm not going to go into each one of these things, um, but not only do you have this graphical view, but you also have a list view so you can quickly see who's logged in, how much time they have left, what they're playing, what they're accessing. Um, you know, our, we just have so many features that it's hard to take a lot of time and talk about everything that is involved. But, you know, like I said, we're trying to make it easy for business owners. We're trying to make it incentivize players to get back in and make the software easy to use. I mentioned a little bit early uh, custom branding. So uh, some people come to us and say, hey, you know, your user interface is fine, but I'd really like to customize it based on my brand or the stores that I am creating, the network that I'm creating. And that's totally something we're able to do if that's something that you want to do. You know, we're not really afraid of hiding costs or anything like that. It does cost probably $5,000 for us to do a custom user interface. We've done things for Best Buy and Alienware. We've done things for Complexity Gaming, GameStop, NZXT, OS Studios, um, so our uh, Ohio State University. So our, our, our users are using the same backend, but just, um, you know, they're catering it to their own locations. And so that's really fun for our users to do. From a center perspective, um, again, we're trying to incentivize players. It's our biggest thing that is our competitive advantage. We work directly with uh, publishers, game publishers. We've done stuff with Riot. In the past, we had the League Unlocked uh, program. 
We did a team fight tactics event all September long on a Tuesday so that centers would get their players in on a Tuesday, uh, which would be a normally an off day. And we gave away eight HP Omen setups and a bunch of riot points. We have a great relationship with Epic who helps us uh, f fund large scale Fortnite tournaments at all of our GG Leap locations. The only requirement is you must be running our software. And um, I believe we have not an official one, but we've got quite a few events coming up with Epic that we're currently in talks with them about that are going to happen over the next uh, 30 to 60 days. Um, when we do these events, you know, all of your locations are willing, are able to participate if they want to. They can opt out if they want to. But the biggest thing that we try to save you time again is that if we're going to do an event for you guys, we want you to have a marketing kit, marketing tools to be able to just pop your logo on there, print stuff out, and get stuff out to your players. So, you know, we do social media banners, we do posters, we do um, eight, eight by 12 uh, flyers, and so that you guys have that stuff and you don't have to spend time or spend money on graphic design resources to get this stuff done. Um, and so again, we're just trying to help the, the business owner focus on the business and not have to do all the ancillary stuff sometimes that comes with a land center. Uh, global prizes. I mentioned this and uh, anybody that's in here that didn't uh, hear, th we've got a huge partnership with SLG and that's just going to keep adding in uh, more and more events. And our Prime program, which I'm not going to touch on too more much, it's, it's a premium uh, benefit for players in your location and that will be released sometime in November. A quick view of, of uh, some of the people that we've worked with. Um, you know, we, uh, from a services perspective, we do a lot of things to get decor, hardware, peripherals uh, cheaper for our customers. And we've got some pretty big names in the works as far as the people that we've worked with. Uh, just about every esports organization you can think of in the past, we've worked with at one time or more. All right, Winger, back to you. The build out. Uh, this ends up being a very stressful but extremely fun part of the business plan. Um, so you've got your business plan, you've got your funding, uh, you've got hundreds of thousands of dollars sitting in the bank. You need something to do. Start writing checks. Um, and you know, one of the first parts you do is the build out. So you you find your location, you get your building. So now you got to do a floor plan. Um, you've got to, you know, kind of figure out what it's going to look like. You got to space out your desks and your chairs and, you know, how far apart they need to be and how are they going to fit in there and what it's going to look like. Every location is different. Every floor plan is different. Everybody's business model is different. Um, the technology you implement is going to be based on your business model, your business plan, what you need to accomplish. Um, and that all kind of meshes together and uh, pops out a cool looking uh, space that you can be proud of uh, at the end of the day. We do a lot of these floor plans. Um, we basically, the best thing we do is, you know, whoever's going to provide the furniture and the decor for your company, you know, we work directly with them to maximize your space so that, uh, you know, you can get the most profit potential uh, out of your space. The more people you can get in, the more money you can bring in at the end of the day. Did we miss a slide? Nope. The grand opening, marketing PR. So the grand opening, everything you're doing is going to build up to the grand opening. Um, you know, you may have uh, some beta testing, you might have some soft uh, opening, but the grand opening, this is when you drop all your marketing, okay? So everything you're doing, and this is usually a six to eight week buildup, uh, social media, um, you know, whatever avenues you want to start taking. Um, but this is, you know, you, you got to be on point. You got to make sure your technology works. You got to make sure your staff is trained. Uh, you need to make sure that you understand exactly what you're doing. And the grand opening, I had some, you know, a lot of businesses, the grand opening is really the busiest time that they ever expect to be. They expect so many people that they can't house them all and they want lines down the streets and they know they'll never be that busy again, but that's fine because it, that's, that's, that's their goal. That's, that's the point of having this grand opening. So, um, you market social media, I mean, I, 
there's other ways to promote there's other ways to market you got google you got adwords but honestly social media is how you're going to connect with 85 percent of your customers um so whether it's facebook whether it's social whether it's uh instagram uh snapchat twitter reddit uh your own discord servers uh i mean there's just so many ways to do that um that you're going to want to take advantage of them all and uh you know it, if you do it properly you're going to have a full house um, your grand opening should probably have a culmination of many different types of events so you can hit all the different types of communities uh, that exist in your environment. So if you got a league community, let's hold a League of Legends tournament. You got a Fortnite community, let's hold a Fortnite tournament. Uh, if you got a Team Fight Tactics community or a Dota community, whatever communities that you're trying to engage, your grand opening event should probably be a week or a month long engagement uh, to bring all these people in. Yeah, and, and you know, I wanted to, to mention also that uh, when you do tournaments, you can make money off of the tournaments, but a lot of times it's going to be in the food and beverages that you sell during that tournament day. A lot of times when you have events and you have tournaments that you are doing yourself, um, it's really a marketing exercise. It's a marketing exercise to get people in the door uh, because the payments that they're going to be paying for the tournament should go to your prize pool. And so you're not going to make a lot of money overall in the tournament. That money's most likely, in our opinion, and people may uh, disagree, but that money that the teams are playing should go directly back to the players that have shown up and played. Um, so you obviously can run your own tournaments. You can run your own events. You can do be as creative as you want to be. But what we do for GG Circuit is A, get global and nationwide events set up. So players that come to your place can still compete on a national level without having to pay for travel and hotel, etc. The publishers and sponsors that we work with, we will fund the tournament and we will ask for a little bit of payment from you, but you actually will be able to make money from tournaments because you're not footing the prize pool bill. Um, so we have tournaments all over the place and you know your location, just be really cautious with the types of tournaments that you want to, to start. And don't get discouraged a lot of times because sometimes there may be five people in a group that say, man, why don't you have an NBA 2K tournament? And you, know, you really will try to promote this a lot and there may not be a lot of people that that show up for a 2k tournament so in our experience league of legends is a no-brainer C uh, csgo is okay you get a lot of uh, people that want to tweak their setup a lot with csgo uh, call of duty is kind of a no-brainer when it comes to tournaments and then really listen to your uh customers and their interest level but just use a little bit of caution when you're doing those tournaments Something and else. To add to that, sorry, J Mac, yeah. to interrupt, but I just wanted to add to that. I mean, obviously, running your own local tournaments based on what your user base, what your gamers like to play, is really important. We have the option, we give you the option to work directly with us to take part in officially run GG circuit specific tournaments, but it's not always what you have to do. So it's literally just an option that you'll have through our partners, Super League Gaming, to jump on board, to keep your gamers coming back into your center, to keep on playing um, week after week. So just wanted to add that. Yeah, for sure. You know, right now we have ggchampions.com, which is our player side. And the Super League Gaming announcement from last week, they will actually be taking over the ggchampions.com brand uh, and will be our our brand for the player side. We're really excited about that because they're going to be uh, huge marketing to your players, getting brands and sponsors, uh, brand activations in everybody's centers, creating daily events that people can come and participate in, and helping us boost those prize pools for major events. Uh, not and one of the ma yeah, sorry, and, and just quickly to, to wrap things up, one of the the key reasons um, that we, we decided to partner with Super League Gaming is because they have um, basically inroads to new gamers that have maybe never played um, any kind of uh, video game at a gaming center. So this is going to be opening up a whole new 
player base for um, gaming centers around the world, actually. So, Absolutely. And, and it's not just going to be hardcore competitive tournaments. It's going to be casual tournaments, uh, stat challenges, things where people can just come and play casually, they get tracked, and they have a chance to win something. Um, and that, those are our favorite, honestly. And it's no work for the center owner. It's all on us and, and the software that we build. Um, so we've got a couple questions in there uh, right now. Number one is, uh, what is the most common market target? And I'm going to assume you're talking about age groups. Um, Winger, you want to take that one? We just, I'll actually jump in because okay. we just did a, um, a, a data pull for that. So um, typically we'll see around about 20% of the audience is obviously quite a, a younger market. So um, 13 years and under. Um, that kind of makes sense because a lot of um, these kids, you know, don't have a full PC gaming rig at home. Um, but the, the, the largest target um, as far as age is concerned is, you know, between that kind of 16 all the way up to 25 year old. And we're seeing um, a decent uh, gender split as well. Um, it can range anywhere between 90% male, 10% um, female to a little more in other territories. So 70% male and 30% female. So it all depends on your specific demographic area, whether you're close to, you know, high school or colleges. Um, but those are the, the most um, popular target markets as far as demographics are concerned that we've seen. Yeah, definitely. It really will behoove you to really look into the economics of your area where you're thinking about opening up um, and the age demographic. Um, so um, I'll move on to the next one. Uh, do you offer any consulting services? Absolutely. That's the bulk of this, this presentation. Um, we, in the last nine months, we've helped about 20 to 30 locations get set up and open. Um, I'm happy to uh, provide uh, a deck to take a look at what we do uh, because we do not only a uh, startup phase, but we also do the implementation phase where we actually can come on site and help you get things set up, help you uh, train your employees. And uh, I call it lowering the brick walls. So ac actually ha having you dodge the errors that we've made over the years. Uh, you know, we've been in business for 15 years, so we've seen a lot of things come and go. We've made mistakes, and we're happy to uh, help you not make those mistakes. Uh, third question I see here, how are consoles tracked? Great question. Um, consoles are tracked directly within the web administrator. Um, your employees will just log, will A, create what we call console nodes within the web administrator, and then log those people into a console and it will track their time. They receive hourly rewards just like PCs. Uh, we're also in the middle of doing some R&D on a potential device that we will connect to a console, but we're going to be doing it differently than a lot of our competitors do and something that will be much more exciting for uh, console players um, within our software. Um, and if you check out, we've got a bunch of videos out on youtube.com slash GG circuit, and there's some, uh, videos on consoles out there. Um, so yeah, so I mean, that is pretty much our webinar talking about how to open a game center. If you have any questions about GG leap, there's an email here for sales. If you have any, uh, questions about services, the services at GG Circuit. We'll get back to you and um, talk to you a little bit more. Um, so whoever asked that, Carlos, maybe send an email to, to sales or services if you want more information and we'll be happy to, to follow up. And other than that, we will just kind of leave the floor open for any other questions. We appreciate everyone that has uh, joined us today for our first webinar. There will be more webinars coming with different subjects. We may come around to this one again in a month or so, but uh, you know we're going to do some walkthroughs on GG Leap. We're going to talk about our player side. Uh, we're going to do uh, all kinds of things just because we want to give the information to everyone that is interested in esports because it's 
absolutely blowing up and people want to take advantage of the esports market and they want to start their own business in esports because uh, people are crazy about gaming and esports these days and it's not only the the pro tournaments and people wanting to be good but really it's the social environment of bringing everybody together in one place uh, teams playing together friends playing together and being able to, Zach likes to say, being able to punch somebody in the arm when they mess up or, uh, you know, everybody have a group high five when they win a, a, a match, a team fight tournament. I don't know. Uh, League so, of Legends uh, match. So sorry to interrupt, J-Mac. Um, Carlos, to your question about how many stations do you need to start, it all really depends on what your location footprint is going to be. Um, if you have identified a space that you know you want to move into, you can contact our team and they can actually give you a blueprint, if you like, and show you how many stations you can fit into any particular area. Um, Winger, what else would you like to say to answer that question? So that specific question, I think it's best to tackle that from a financial business perspective um, because, you know, sure, you might have what you – find is the ideal location but if it's so small and you can't put very many stations in there you actually limit your profit potential and let's be completely honest we all go into business to make money um, and you need to be able to not only cover all your bills pay all your employees but then you also need to be able to pay yourself a living wage um, so there are situations to where too small is frankly too small um, and to answer that, to answer your question specifically, we actually suggest that uh, center should be probably a minimum of 60 stations. Um, we know some around that 40 to 50 mark um, that do okay, um, but uh, traditionally um, the statistics show that anybody that opens up station uh, a center with less than 40 stations is usually out of business in 12 to 36 months. Thanks, Winger. Um... Okay, guys, thank you very much for joining us. Um, as Jay Mack mentioned, we will be doing other webinars very, very soon. So keep an eye out on our GG Leap channels, um, and we will post notifications there. Um, thanks again for your time. Thank you, Jay Mack. Thank you, Winger. See you on the other side. Thank you, Georgina. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.